Hello everyone. I think it turned on. Yeah, it turned on. Um, this is Katie, the CSA coach with Shared Legacy Farms. And this morning we are doing a tutorial. Sorry, I was making sure my dog wasn't getting into my food that I have ready. Um, we're doing a tutorial on celery, specifically farm fresh organic celery that Shared Legacy Farms um, provides to its customers. I'm just signing in on my phone so I can see if anyone has any questions because this video is live in our CSA Facebook group page. So before I talk too much about the celery, I actually just want to get the celery soup going because I want to try and finish it at the end of the video. So I'm making a really basic celery soup today. Some people might actually use it more of like a sauce, um, but we're just gonna do a basic cream of celery soup uh, that has some pretty simple ingredients. The first one is about half a cup of butter. Um, kind of guessing here. So we've got butter and celery, onions, and potatoes. And that's pretty much it to start. We'll probably add a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, so I'm actually going to grab my onion bag out of the freezer. If you watched our videos before, my videos before, I'm not a huge fan of um, cutting up onions all the time. So I tend to cut them all up at one time and throw them in a freezer bag and that way I can use them. And this recipe calls for a half a cup of butter, one large onion. So I'm going to use almost a whole cup of my chopped up onions here. These are sweet onions. That's the, what we had in our box a few weeks ago. I'm going to throw these back in the freezer. So one, one onion, one large potato diced up. I have a couple small potatoes here diced up into small pieces. And then it called for one head of celery. Um, so I've got my celery stalks chopped up here into fine pieces. We're gonna save the leaves and we're gonna top the soup with the leaves. So I've got about a head of celery here, chopped up, ready to go. And we are just going to heat this up a little bit. butter melt. So I just have a potato, butter, celery, and onion. We'll put a little bit of salt and pepper in here. And we're just going to let this cook until the onions are, are pretty well cooked and the celery starts to soften and the potatoes start to soften and then we'll, we'll add some more goodies to that. So <clears throat> All right, now that we've got that started, we can talk about some fun things with this celery. So this is the celery that comes in our box from Shared Legacy Farms. Um, you can see it's got some really pretty leaves here and some smaller, looks like more dense stalks than some of the more water rich celery that you might find at the grocery store. So this entire thing is edible. The leaves are edible, the stalks, no matter how skinny they are, are edible. This celery is different than the celery that you might find at the grocery store because the water content is not as high. So you can see that makes sometimes the stalks a little skinnier. It's more of a cooking celery. The celery flavor is very strong because it's not as waterlogged. And the nutrient content also increases because there's not as much water in it. So. Um, Farmer Kurt and Farmer Corinna were explaining to me that a lot of times <laughs> places, there's actually a place called Celeryville here in Ohio where they grow a lot of celery. Um, they tend to really water those plants a lot and really try to get as much water as possible in their plants, um, in the celery plant, and that makes them larger and more water rich. Um, Shared Legacy Farms doesn't do that, and so we get a little bit smaller of a stalk, but that really increases the rich celery flavor. And like I said, also the nutrient content. So when you get these home, you can store them a few different ways. Um, 
I will tell you first off that you probably do not want to store them in just a plastic Ziploc like this. It's going to make a limper, a limper stalk faster. So you can store them in a green bag, which is how I had these stored for almost a week. And they are perfect. Um, store them in a green bag to trap that ethylene gas, keeps them fresher longer. You can also store them like a flower in a jar like this with a little bit of water. These also stored very well. These look about the same to me. I was curious if one would store better than the other. The other option is that you can wrap your celery stalks in foil and then store them in a refrigerator. I have not used that method, but I have read fantastic reviews that that also keeps them fresher longer. If for some reason the celery stalk goes limp, you can also set it in a little bit of water like this for a few hours and usually it'll perk it back up. So don't get discouraged if that happens. You can always put it in a little bit of water. All right. So not your average celery, definitely stronger in flavor. I can even smell that already. It smells a lot stronger than the average celery I might get at the at the grocery store. We talked about storage. You could store it like a flower as well as in a green bag. Um, this celery you can definitely eat cooked or raw. Um, it just might be a little bit more fibrous than that traditional celery that you're used to. So I prefer to cook with it. It is fantastic for soups and for stews. You can braise it by itself for more of a side dish. We'll talk about some things that you can do with the leaves. We're making this celery soup today. I'm also going to prep a freezer a freezer meal um, that I can cook a few months down the road when I want something fast that I can throw in a crock pot. So let's do that first, actually. <clears throat> um, so when you get these home, you're going to store them in your green bag or like a flower or in foil. You don't need to wash them prior to storing. You are just going to rinse them well in some cold water. A lot of times celery is something that can be a little dirtier. And then after you do that or before you do that, you are just going to chop off the ends of these stems here. You can see those just need to be chopped off. I rinse these off pretty well, so I'm actually going to use any part that I'm any part that I'm not going to cook with today. I'm going to throw in my veggie scrap bag because this celery is going to really make a fantastic broth. So when I was cutting apart some of the leaves, I had some super skinny stalks that I saved. I'm just going to throw those ends in there. And those are all going to go in my veggie scrap bag. So I'm going to cut off what I know are my decent sized stalks here. And then I will usually go through and see what else I can kind of get that was higher up with these leaves. And there's not too many other higher stocks on here. So this should be pretty easy. All right. So you've got celery stalks that you can eat raw, you can cook with, you can chop. You've got these leaves that we're also going to end up using. And then the rest I put in my veggie scrap bag there. So actually I'm going to set these aside for right now. We'll get to the leaves and what we can do with those. This onion and celery potato mixture is doing well, smelling fantastic. All right, so in this veggie scrap bag, because we're always looking for some good exit strategies in our CSA group, um, a way to kind of use up some veggies, maybe we're overwhelmed or we want to prep some meals. I love anything I can do ahead of time. Um, that's going to save me time later. So I kind of like this idea of throwing things in a bag, putting it in the freezer, and that way I can throw it in my crock pot or in my instant pot later on to have a fast meal. So today I'm making a vegetable beef stew, or a vegetable beef soup <clears throat> stew. You could easily make this vegetarian by adding some more veggies or just skipping out the beef. You could also probably swap out some different proteins if you wanted to. So um, in here I'm going to put a pound to two pounds of beef stew meat, which I have. 
I am also going to need one can of diced tomatoes, a cup of diced carrots, and a cup of diced celery, which I have already here. So I just prepped this ahead of time. I left some of the leaves, but I just really diced up that celery fine. Just the way that you would probably want it if you were having soup. The other thing that's going in here are some onions. So we'll grab that from my freezer. So I've got a pound, a pound to two pounds stew meat, one can of tomatoes, a cup of carrots, a cup of celery, and then it calls for one onion. So again, I'll probably just pour a little bit into here. Kind of approximately one onion. When I go to throw this in the crock pot, I guess I could always add more. Add more if I wanted to. Alright, so I like to label the bag before I before I start to put stuff in here. It keeps it a little bit easier. So I've got beef, beef, veggie, stew. And I've got three things I'm supposed to add the day that I go to cook this. So I'm going to put that on the bag. The day I throw this in the crock pot, I'm going to add some chopped potatoes. Three chopped potatoes is what this calls for. Potatoes, especially when they're raw, don't freeze well. So I'm not going to put them in the bag right now. And then I'm going to add three cups of broth and one can of vegetable juice. I'm going to be honest with you, that vegetable juice is probably never going to get added. That's not on my usual like pantry list. So I'm probably just going to add the broth, maybe a little bit of tomato paste, maybe some extra diced tomatoes. I'll kind of see. So, um, but I'll definitely add that three cups of broth. And when I go to use this, I'm just going to pop it in my crock pot. And I'm going to put it on high for four to five hours or low eight to nine hours. So I have all that information written on my bag. Super easy. Um, because these vegetables aren't blanched, this meal is not necessarily going to be good for years. Um, years. Probably a year. Um, just going to throw that in there. Push that. All right. So when vegetables aren't blanched, like I've got my cup of raw carrots here, my cup of raw celery, this meal will probably be good in the freezer for three months. So it's August right now, so I've got till November to use this, which I think is still, still pretty good. I'll talk about, talk about my soup in a minute. So I've got my cup of carrots, my cup of celery. I am going to add my one can of diced tomatoes. Some salt and some pepper. Really easy, you guys. Like, as you can see, I have like a baby coming any day, so... The fact that I'll have some freezer meals that I can just pull out and use super fast. Something to look forward to. So that's pretty much it. This calls for a little bit of parsley and a bay leaf as far as things to add to the bag right now. I don't have any dried parsley. I do have some dried carrot tops. Um, so I'm going to add some dried carrot tops instead of dried parsley. Really easy just to hang your carrot tops. I got that tip from a CSA member. Um, and then crumble them and use them instead of celery. So in my experience, freezer bags or freezer crock pot meals or instant pot meals tend to do a little bit better when they're frozen with some liquid in the bag. So because this diced tomatoes doesn't really take up a lot of liquid there, I'm actually going to add a little bit of broth now, just to put some more liquid in the bag. So I think that's going to allow it to freeze a little bit better. All right. Exciting. I think that's exciting. Um, I'm going to let it freeze standing up like this, not flat, because if I let it freeze flat in the bag, 
it's going to be hard to get into my crock pot while it's frozen. So I'm going to let it freeze just like this. I've got my label on there. I'm going to use it within three months. So easy. I have dinner ready. At some point, that's already prepped and ready to go. So, all right, we've got freezer meal done. I will be enjoying that vegetable beef soup in a month or two when I want a healthy meal with some vegetables and I don't feel like cooking or prepping anything. So, all right, we've used a cup of celery. That's going to be really flavorful. So in here, we had our potatoes, the butter, the celery, the onions. I added a couple cups of broth. I'm going to add one more cup. I actually need to make a batch of broth right now, so I'm using my, my go-to chicken broth that I think I got at Costco. Actually, yeah, I know I got it at Costco. Um, so we've got our large potato, our celery, our onion. I added three cups of broth. And we're going to let this come to a boil and let it cook for maybe eight to ten minutes until those potatoes are cooked through. And then we're just about going to be done. So super simple cream of celery soup. The only other things that go into this are some fresh dill and some cream. You don't even have to add the cream, I guess, if you don't want to. So five, six ingredient basic cream of celery soup. So we'll let this simmer for another eight to 10 minutes and we will get back to it. So next on our list are all these leaves because we've got a lot of leaves with this fresh celery. So you can definitely add them to soups or stews. I saved some leaves to add to the top of this soup. I could also just go ahead and add them now if I wanted to. Um, you can add them in stir fries. You can add them to stews when you're roasting or braising meats. You, celery leaves or even the stalks are fantastic. They taste just like celery. Um, <clears throat> one popular thing that our CSA group brought up was making celery salt. Um, so what I did earlier, just to kind of prep ahead of time, is I dried the leaves in a salad spinner. So I chopped off the leaves to some of my celery, rinsed them, dried them really well in a salad spinner. You can also just dry them in a towel. I heated my oven to 250, so we want a low temperature because we just want the leaves to dry out before we actually make the salt. We don't want them to burn. And I let them set at 250 for probably 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. I just kind of checked on them to make sure they weren't burning, and you can see now they're getting, they're super crumbly. So I didn't want them to overlap too much when I did that, so I made two batches here. dried celery leaves. And remember, this tastes just like celery. So it is going to be good at lots of things. Turn this down a little bit. Whew. Actually, I just use my hand. So you could probably put this in a plastic bag and crush these up. I'm just going to use my hand. So I had an entire bunch of celery leaves, and you can see once it's dehydrated and crushed up, it doesn't really end up being that much. If there were any like larger stems or stalks, they're not going to crush up as easily, so you could probably just um, pick those out. Celery salt is really good to use on proteins like chicken. You could also use it on some other veggies, soups, popcorn. Popcorn was something that our CSA family mentioned that they like the celery salt on. So just another really easy way to kind of use 
kind of use the leaves. Someone else mentioned a Bloody Mary glass. So if you're a Bloody Mary drinker. I just have a few like larger pieces here, if you can see that, that I'm just going to pick out. Because if I was eating popcorn, I probably wouldn't want those on there. Um, so yeah, coleslaw, other veggie dishes, definitely. So we've got, I've got this pretty much crushed up. I'm just kind of feeling to see if I've got any more large stems that would be unpleasant for someone to eat. And then you use a one-to-one -one ratio of like a coarser salt to the celery leaves. So I don't have very much here. I'm going to kind of eyeball it. Get this a little bit finer. You could even run this through if you really only wanted um, fine, fine pieces. I know I'm going to probably use this mostly in cooking, so I'm not going to mind larger leaves left in there. You could also run this through like a larger piece of cheesecloth or something if you wanted to. So I've got some coarse salt here. You could measure each of these. I'm just kind of eyeballing half and half. And I'm going to mix this up and I've got a great celery salt. Popcorn, cooking, soups, stews, meats. Pretty easy. So 20 minutes or so at a low temperature in the oven on some parchment paper on a on a baking sheet. Like I said, I turn the oven to 250. And that's awesome. So I will store that. That's gonna be good pretty much indefinitely. So even if I use it over the next year, that would also be a really nice present. I feel like I can make a cute container and give homemade celery salt to like my mom or something. I feel like she'd really like that. So, um, yeah, awesome. Exciting. Use the whole leaves. All leaves. All right. So I will give our soup a stir here. Looks like these potatoes are starting to cook. Alright, so we've got our celery leaves. These, like I said, were the leftover parts of my celery. I'm going to throw these in my veggie scrap bag. We have a great video on how to use a veggie scrap bag to make broth. Um, typically a broth is going to call for celery, carrots, and onions, but most of your veggie scraps can actually go in there. But it's still important to keep in the back of your mind that a broth is going to taste best, traditional broth, when you have those carrots, onions, and celery in there. So I'll make sure that we post the, the link to our veggie scrap bag tutorial, or you can also find that on YouTube. Um, also, I forgot to mention, we have a great celery ebook. And I will leave the link for our ebook in the comments. But you'll find lots of tips and tricks for storage in this, how to use celery, in addition to some recipes on how to use your celery that you might might find either on a farm from Shared Legacy or in the store. So <clears throat> all those extra scraps went into my veggie scrap bag. The other thing that some people will do is they will have um, a mirepoix like which is like your basic recipe for your, your, your onions, your carrots, and your celery. So it's a two to one, one ratio of onions to carrots and celery to kind of get a broth started or a sauce started. Some people will chop up their celery, their carrots, and their onions and throw that ratio into little Ziplocs and just have it in the freezer ready to go for when they do need to make a soup or a sauce. If you do that because you didn't blanch the items first, um, it's probably going to be good for about three months. Whereas sometimes if you blanch something, it's going to extend the shelf life in the freezer. It's going to preserve something for eight months, maybe a year. So just kind of keep that in mind, but it, that is another idea that you can do um, 
with your with your veggie scraps. So I actually do want to preserve some of this celery today. So we are going to blanch some. And I've got my water back there warming up. We'll work on our soup here for a second. All right, so our potatoes are actually cooked. So this was our one head of celery chopped up. We've got a couple potatoes, maybe a large onion. We've got our butter and our broth. Our potatoes are pretty much cooked. So what we're gonna do is we're going to puree this. The original recipe said, you know, to the puree the whole time. A lot of times when I'm making a soup, I like to still have some chunks of some veggies in there, so I'm probably gonna puree maybe about half of this. And we're gonna add some fresh dill when we go to puree it. Um, so ideally, I would let this cool a little bit because this is gonna be pretty hot. But I'm gonna be extra careful here. I'm going to make sure I leave some of the onions and the carrots and the celery in here and get some of this broth. And for the whole recipe, it's not a ton of soup. Um, it called for about a half a cup of fresh dill, which I have here. so. I'm going to throw all that in there. I'm going to step over here and just puree it. If you don't like dill, you obviously wouldn't have to use the dill. I always struggle with getting this open. <laughs> all right. I might have to wait a second for this to cool down. All right, we'll wait on that a second. I'll give it another shot <laughs> in a minute. So we'll get our we'll get our blanching um, going here. I'm gonna transfer this over here. All right. So standard blanching rules are that you boil some water. Um, with some salt in it. You add the salt because it prevents as many minerals from leaching out of whatever you're blanching, whether it's spinach or celery. Um, and then you have an ice bath ready. So the ice bath stops the cooking process after you boil whatever you're going to boil. So we are going to blanch some of these celery stalks today. And when you blanch something, you are obviously planning on freezing it. I guess not necessarily, but we're going to freeze it. Um, so we want to cut it in pieces that we plan on using it when we thaw it out. So because I'm going to use this celery for the next year, probably in like soups and stews, um, I'm going to dice it up in the pieces, size pieces that I would want to blanch it in um, or use it in. Celery is going to take a little bit longer to blanch. Sometimes things like spinach just take like 30 seconds. Celery is probably going to take a few minutes. So we will dice that up. Um, did I use the other celery? Yeah. So we'll blanch that. Celery actually is a really great digestive or supports digestion. Woo! We got it. Um, it really supports digestion and it's been shown to really help strengthen the mucosal layer in your stomach. So if you've been at risk for ulcers in the past or feel like you need help with digestion, it's a really, really great thing to kind of include, um, even if it's a little bit here and there. And remember, when you don't have the waterlogged celery, the nutrient content is going to be a lot higher. So really great for overall digestion. Also has really been shown to help support cardiovascular health. Um, helping with healthy cholesterol levels in addition to help supporting healthy blood pressure. So really great for gut health, 
really great for cardiovascular health. All right, so we've got this beautiful puree with our celery soup and our dill, and it smells so good. Like I said, I think I'm going to use this even more of like a sauce, not so much like a soup. So you could definitely puree the entire, the entire batch here. Um, I pureed a little bit more than half of it, and I'm going to add it back into my back into my pan here. I'm going to leave a little bit of the chunk. So half a cup of dill, adding that back in, and then the recipe actually calls for about a half a cup of cream. So I am going to add a little bit of cream, and I'm going to stir this up. And that smells delicious. So you could also thicken this up a little bit if you wanted to, to use it more of like a sauce. Um, you could add some other vegetables, like some carrots would have gone great in here to make it more of a hearty vegetable soup. Um, but that was really easy. It took us 20 minutes, if that. I'm going to let that cool. And the dill and the celery are going to go really, really well together. So our water has almost come to a boil here. I'm going to get our ice bath ready. Let's see, yep. Water has come to a boil, so I'm going to add our celery. Let's see if I can, well, I'll just dump it. And I'm going to let that boil, cook for about three minutes. I think it should be good for the celery. If my belly gets any bigger, I'm not going to be able to make it around my, <laughs> my setup here. Cutting it close. Alright, so I've got cold water in here and I am going to throw ice in it. Cold water is not going to cut it when it comes to planting. We've got to get it colder. So we have to have some ice. And we're going to transfer the celery right into the ice bath to stop the cooking process. That's going to preserve our celery longer in the freezer. So that's why my freezer meal bag that I just prepped, I've only got about like three months to use it because the vegetables in there aren't blanched. Um, so the enzymes are going to start to kind of break down those veggies a little bit. When I blanch it, it's going to preserve that celery for up to a year in my freezer. So this is a little bit of a better preservation mode. It's going to buy you a little bit more time. Um, the other thing, if you wanted to preserve your celery and you didn't want to freeze it, you could also pickle it. We've got a great pickling recipe in our ebook. So those are kind of our two preservation strategies for our celery if we need them. All right, let's see. Definitely changing in color. So when you do go to blanch something, it starts to turn bright green or brighten in color. So it's almost been three minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take this out and just dump the celery right in the ice bath. It's great too when you're blanching something, if you're taking the time to blanch something, to do a large amount of it if you can. So, you know, if you had celery on sale or a regular farmer's market and wanted to pick up a bunch of great farm fresh celery like this, but weren't sure how you were going to eat it all right away, blanching it would be a great way to kind of help you get through the winter and not have to rely on all that celery bill. <laughs> all that celery bill celery, right? So if I get more from Shared Legacy this season, probably blanch it and that way I'll have really great nutritious celery all year long. Alright, so we're going to let that cool in our ice bath for a couple minutes there and then 
I'm going to transfer it to this sheet and I'm going to put it in my freezer and I'm going to let the celery freeze out on the sheet and then I'm going to transfer it to a Ziploc bag once it's frozen. If I throw all this right into a freezer bag, it's going to have a lot of ice crystals, it's going to form in like all one big cube and I want to just be able to pull out a little bit here and there just like I did with my onions. So um, that's why I'm going to freeze it that way. It's also good to dry it off a little bit if you can, although the celery won't be, won't be super wet like something like spinach, but we can definitely dry it off a little bit. So this is pretty cool here. I'm going to set it on this towel. We didn't do any raw celery recipes today, but you could definitely still snack on this celery. Like I said, it's just going to be a little bit more fibrous than the Celeryville, Celeryville, Celery. Now I'm always going to refer to regular celery as Celeryville, Celery. So there's some more in there I will still have to grab out, but I'm gonna let these freeze in little pieces. You can see that they're a darker or brighter green. Freeze on this sheet and then transfer them to a Ziploc and I will have celery to use for the next eight to 12 months. So I'm just gonna check in and make sure I don't have any questions. Looks like I don't, so. That is it. That is our celery tutorial. Make sure you check back in the comments for our celery ebook in addition to our veggie scrap bag video, which is a good one. And thank you for joining us. Again, this is Katie, the CSA coach with Shared Legacy Farms. Have a great day.